Hello, I'm Arjun Naha. I'm a software developer and in my free time I attend school and study for my GCSEs. <laughs> Today I'm going to be talking about a project in which I launched a weather balloon into space. I started this towards the end of 2013 and finished the first stage last year. I'm going to be giving a brief overview of the project, the challenges we faced and how we overcame them, the technology behind the project and why we did it. So, how does one go about launching a balloon into space? You have a payload containing some electronics such as a GPS and radio. This is then attached to a latex balloon which is filled with helium. The balloon pulls the payload with it and as the pressure changes in the, outer, in the stratosphere, the balloon bursts and it glides back to Earth on a parachute. Throughout the flight, GPS is providing information which is then sent down to us via radio. Sound cheap? So we secured funding through a variety of methods. The majority of money came from a grant that we applied for from the UK Space Agency. When we applied, our project aim was to broaden the interest of space to a wider audience and to give the message that the UK has a space sector. The overall impact was a wider reach of those with only a limited knowledge of the sector. Also, as a student myself, I wanted to raise awareness with my peers. We then set out purchasing all of the components, assembling them together, and finally, it was launch day. We travelled up to the launch location and went about setting up all of the equipment, inflating the balloon, and launching it. So those slides were the combination of three years hard work. We had many roadbacks in those three years and we managed to overcome them all. So to be able to launch a balloon in the UK, you need approval from the Civil Aviation Authority. It's very strictly granted based on location and airplane activity in the area. We originally applied for permission to launch from our school grounds in Berkshire. We actually got turned down because we were too close to Gatwick Airport's controlled airspace. So we had to look for somewhere else. It's trickier than it sounds. You've got to look for a place with no major airports, big roads or main cities. So, we settled on St Michael's Park within Sirencester, within Gloucestershire. That was one of the problems which we overcame. So this was our payload box in which we launched into space. The antenna we had fitted uh, to the payload was very weak. We only found this out once we had launched the balloon and it was in the air, quite literally out of our control. We had to change some software on the ground to up the gain and we were able to get it working. So I'll tell you about some of the technology we used in the payload to be able to do the project. We used two GoPro action cameras. We used a U-Blocks GPS chipset, which then sent the GPS data to a Raspberry Pi, a very popular hobbyist computer. This then got transmitted down to us using the Radiometrics radio transmitter. We captured a lot of data during the flight. That's a very small section. We captured the time, location, altitude, speed, heading, and temperature. But why did we do it? If you can remember that part of the project aim was to, away, was to raise the awareness of the program to other students, we did this through a variety of methods. We created a video, the link to which is on today's agenda page, and we gave uh, presentations to the rest of my students, hundreds and thousands of students. We had a very diverse team spanning all different backgrounds. When we faced problems, this helped us immensely, as we had a lot of different angles to work from. So what came out of it? This was one of the pictures taken from 36,000 metres above the Earth with a GoPro. To put this into context, here's a little video we made about the launch day. We started off the day by travelling to St Michael's Park in Sirencester to launch our weather balloon. The forecast was looking good, as was the predicted path, so we were on track to launch at 12 o'clock.
sending data down to us every three seconds in the form of radio waves. So if we're running on a laptop, then decoded the waves and converted them into digital information we could use to track the balloon. and we recovered the balloon. It had fallen a few miles away from the original launch location, but we had managed to locate it. All of those images and pictures that you saw were only possible due to the fact that we were able to recover the payload and therefore the cameras. So, as we look to the future, what is to behold for this project? Hopefully once our GCSEs are out of the way, we're going to launch another one with a more advanced data logger, capturing humidity, gas, radiation, and UV levels. All of this will require extremely innovative thinking to allow us to succeed. <coughs> so as you can probably tell, I like getting my teeth into the next project. Earlier this year, I won a scholarship to Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference in San Jose. We had to develop an app to apply. Only 300 people worldwide made it out of the tens of thousands that applied. I got a conference ticket and accommodation. Over the next week, I had the most amazing experience of my life from seeing Michelle Obama just meters away from me speaking about STEM, to attending one of the largest conferences in the world. With over 5,000 developers, it was a very memorable occasion. Apple aims this scholarship at a wide range of students and STEM students. The youngest scholarship recipient there was 11, and oldest was 83. Inclusivity of age, as well as gender, is very important in STEM, as this is the next generation in the workplace. The sky is not the limit. Thank you. If the sky is not the limit, what is your long-term goal? Uh, so the long-term goal here is to encourage students into the STEM sector, doing those STEM GCSEs, A-levels and degrees, and filling that shortage of engineer engineers that we currently have in the technology sector. And what about you personally? Where do you see yourself in five, ten years. Where do I see myself? Uh, hopefully in the STEM sector. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully with a uh, degree uh, and founding a company, hopefully. But how can children not be engaged when they see this? I mean, it's just fascinating. Did you get all your mates involved? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So some of, yeah, some of my friends were in that video uh, and it was really, really that inclusive. So where does it all come from though? How did it all start for you? Uh, so I was looking one day, it was the Raspberry Pi actually, uh, I was looking at things you could do with it and this popped up and I thought, hang on, that looks very interesting. Uh, so I read more and read more about it. So it was three years work leading up to that launch day. So this yeah. is something you did on your own. It wasn't something spearheaded by school at all? Not at all. So I did get support from school for having days off school and we used school branding to promote it. But no, all the work was, was mostly me, yes. So university? Yes. yes. We we've asked space. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've asked, asked all, all the questions so far, but I'm sure someone here might have a, a question for you. Anybody have a question for <coughs> Marjan? So first thing I want to say, well done, mate. Yeah. Do not Thank all you. about you. Uh, well you. done. So roll back to you. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, um, what do you think, based on your your view, or there is a more of a 
going back to you, is that Lisa? Louisa. Louisa, almost. How can you forget that? Or two of us. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were saying that there is only seven or six or three percent. Three percent. Three percent of ladies going to STEM. Of uh, female field. students. Yeah. What's your opinion? What do you think? Why your girlfriends don't go more? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we are seeing a rise this year with the GCSE computer science. We had uh, more females than ever take it, which is rising sign. It is being promoted at a younger age now, uh, and I think it is really rising at the moment. That's good. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay, Arjun, thank oh, you. Well, Peter no, wants to ask a question. Oh, would you be willing to collaborate? I'm working on a project oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> to launch a rocket off a weather balloon platform. Absolutely. Uh, it's all happening here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can speak to you afterwards about that. <laughs> Arjun, thank you so much for sharing that with us. That's absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we have proud mama here as well. Yes. So, filming the whole time, of course. Yeah, sorry, yes. <laughs> to be done. Thank you, Arjun. I do find it absolutely fascinating how we got that payload back. And I was being instructed by four teenage boys to go here. We went to farms, went to stables. We were told extremely rude words by a number of uh, farmers to get off their land. So um, it is uh, quite amazing that he got that back and, you know, so, and get those incredible pictures. Um, so really, I just want to wrap up really here. I've only got one slide because I know we're a little bit short on time here. But yes, I'm Jumi. Um, um, and I work at Vodafone and in the enterprise IT sector as the cloud and security portfolio manager and um, just going on to a lot of subjects we've talked today about trying to get that gender different you know that reduce that gender difference in the technology workspace so we spoke about how women are actually going into the technology sector but we've just in Vodafone there's been a couple of really key initiatives that have taken place uh, this year and still in progress where we're trying to encourage young girls actually to go into STEM because I myself did engineering many many years ago and even then there was like three or four girls studying the subject in you know there were 70 boys studying and there was like three girls and I would have thought 20 years on that, that you know would have improved you know would have improved because so many girls take A levels physics maths and all the STEM subjects so but it hasn't and it's just like trying to understand why that hasn't happened so we've got two schemes running at Vodafone one is step into STEM where we're going in to speak with girls who are taking Taking STEM subjects at A level, encouraging them to work in the technology area um, and what it's like to work in the technology area. So, we've been mentoring a number of these girls. And finally, we've got Code Like a Girl, which is like focusing on much younger um, girls um, between the ages of 13 and 18. And it's being run worldwide by Vodafone to a number of, um, number of campuses where they come on board for a week to get a taste of what it's really like and to really encourage it because there's so many of us and you know I think we would make up a good you know amount of on the workforce so that's um, I just wanted to just say a little bit about the schemes that we're running we're passionate about you know our young people that are up and coming and we want to fill you know with some of the girls that will also help in the workplace so thank you very much everybody thank you you talk about code like a girl really targeting girls from the age of 13 onwards yes. and you go in and you talk to a level uh, yes. girls as well what about trying to talk to the girls even younger than 13 trying to really get them interested at that younger age when they're still impressionable I think it's a really good question because, you know, Step Into STEM was done earlier this year with the A-level students. Code Like a Girl is done again for younger students, so we're trying to get them, you know, more impressionable. Maybe the next step is to go into the primary school and encourage, because we do find it. You know, I think earlier on one of the speakers was saying that, that you know, that primary school, they're performing very well, and then they go into senior school, and a couple of years later, a lot of the subjects fall behind. But in A-levels, again, you see so many girls performing, so outperforming the, you know, the boys completely. But why do they not go on to study the subjects and do you know go into technology areas I mean we're trying to increase I mean we've spoken a lot about the statistics today about you know less than 20% you know make up in the workforce that's a key generation of students not go you know not going in that workplace is key 
skill gap really. What about mentor sh- mentoring and sponsorship then? Do, do, does Vodafone need to take it yeah, to the next level? So a lot, level? Yeah, so there's a lot of apprenticeships that happen especially with the step into STEM where they go into the workplace uh, the girls can go into the workplace do a work placement and get a real taste of what it's like and can see that you know that avoid that stereotype of like oh an engineer do get your hands dirty mm-hmm. far yeah. from it and we've got to break that stereotype at a young age so that's Excellent. what I personally think so thank you thank, thank you. you very much thank indeed. you very thank much you. thank you, thank you.